Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss what are balanced and imbalanced datasets and what are the different techniques we need to use to handle imbalanced dataset in machine learning. First, we will discuss what are balanced dataset. A particular dataset is called as balanced dataset if the number of examples in each classes is approximately equal. For example, you can say that there are two classes are there. One is a positive class and another one is a negative class. If the number of examples in positive and negative class is approximately equal to one another, then we can say that the given data set is balanced over here. If you look at this particular example, and there are two classes are there, they were represented with blue and orange color. In this case, uh, both the data sets contain equal, almost equal number of examples, you can see. So that's the reason we can say that the data set is balanced over here. Coming back to the second type of data set that is called as imbalanced data set. A data set is called as imbalanced data set if there is a very high difference between the classes of that particular data set. So if you have two classes in your uh, data set, like let us say that a positive and negative, if there is a very high difference between the number of examples in each of those particular classes, such a data set is called as imbalanced data set. So if you look at this example, in this case, uh, we have uh, two classes given to us. One is represented with blue, another one is represented with red here. And if you look at the number of examples in blue, uh, it is having very high number compared to the red number of examples here. So that's the reason you can say that this data set is imbalanced data set over here. Now, what are the problems we will face with respect to imbalanced data set? Uh, the very first problem what we face is uh, all the standard uh, machine learning techniques such as decision tree, logistic regression, etc. have bias towards the majority class. That is, uh, they tend to ignore the minority classes and they will learn from those particular only majority classes or they try to memorize those particular majority classes by ignoring the minority class examples. Now, we will take an example to understand uh, the problems with imbalanced data set. Uh, let us say that you are working on uh, fraud detection. Uh, whenever you have such kind of data set, uh, there will be very less number of examples which are fraudulent transactions here. And whenever you train your model with the help of that particular kind of uh, data set, uh, definitely you will get a very high accuracy. For example, you will get more than 95 or uh, almost 100% accuracy over here. Now, uh, when you do something like that, you will be very happy, like uh, I'm getting a very good accuracy for my uh, model or something like that. When you give input to your model, that is a trained model, your model always predicts the new example as not a fraud transaction. This is because uh, the data set contains high number of uh, not of fraud transaction. The model will retain or can say then memorize those particular thing. And then whenever you give an example, every example will be classified as not a fraud transaction here. So this is not a good uh, thing uh, when it comes to building a machine learning model. Now somehow we need to handle that particular imbalanced data set. Now what are the different techniques we have to handle class imbalance problem? There are mainly five techniques are there. The first technique is we need to use a right evaluation matrix. There were n number of uh, evaluation matrix are there. Uh, the very first uh, evaluation matrix, what we can use with respect to imbalance uh, data set is confusion matrix. Confusion matrix is a table showing correct predictions and the type of incorrect predictions here. With the help of uh, confusion matrix, we can calculate precision, recall, F1 score. Rather than con concentrating on accuracy, we can calculate these three matrix here. Precision is the number of uh, true positive divided by all positive predictions. Recall is the number of true positives divided by number of positive values in the test data. And F1 score is the weighted average between precision and recall here. So rather than concentrating on accuracy of the model, if you calculate these values based on these particular uh, evaluation matrix, you can decide whether your model is performing well or not. That's the first uh, technique what you can use to handle uh, class imbalance problem in imbalance data set. Coming back to the second one, uh, in this case, uh, we can do something called as oversampling or it's also called as upsampling. Whenever a data is given to us, uh, you can say that this is the original data given to us. It contains uh, two classes here. One class is represented with blue. Another one is uh, with respect to orange here. And if you look at the number of examples in this original data set, the blue class examples are more compared to orange class here. So what we can do is we can replicate this particular minority class examples and we will get almost equal number of majority class examples here. So this is what is called as oversampling. So here we don't uh, lose any information because the same examples were replicated here. 
uh, that's the reason there is no loss of information but what happens over here is whatever the data set we have replicated and we formed it this is called as a synthetic data it is prone to what is that called as overfitting now the question comes in front of us is what is overfitting overfitting is like uh, our model performs well on the training data but not on the testing or validation data i have already discussed what is overfitting and how to handle overfitting and all the link for that video is given in the description below so this is the second technique what we can use to handle the imbalanced data the third one is something called as undersampling or it's also called as downsampling so again whenever a data set is given to us uh, if you notice this particular data set uh, the blue ca class examples are more here so what we can do here is rather than replicating the minority class examples we will eliminate some of the examples from the majority class here so once you eliminate it you will get what is that called as uh, uh, the new data set or the synthetic data set which is almost equivalent to the number of examples in orange class here so this is what is called as undersampling this is a very simple technique uh, but the problem with respect to this one is uh, we are removing some of the examples because of that we are losing some information so because every uh, data is having uh, the information if you remove that particular thing from your uh, model definitely you are losing a lot of information over here that is the big disadvantage of undersampling or downsampling i have already discussed what are the different uh, undersampling and oversampling techniques are there the link for those videos is given in the description below coming back to the next technique to handle imbalanced data that is called as feature selection so whenever a data set is given to us uh, which is having imbalanced uh, classes what we can do is we can calculate something called as one sided matrix such as correlation coefficient and odds ratio or two sided matrix something called as information gain and chi square so once you calculate this correlation coefficient we will be able to get to know whether two features are having uh, the same importance or they are different with one another if they are same rather than considering two features we will consider only one feature over there so that's a one possibility the second technique is uh, the two sided matrix that is uh, information gain so whenever a data set is given to us uh, if you have two features uh, rather than considering all the features we will calculate the importance of those particular features with the help of information gain uh, if you feel that a particular feature is very important for your uh, model building then we will consider it otherwise we will remove that particular thing so if you do that particular thing uh, what can happen is uh, uh, we we are removing what is that called as class imbalance uh, from the given imbalance data set over here the last technique uh, what we can use uh, with respect to uh, class imbalance problem is something known as ensemble learning technique so in this particular case what we do is uh, rather than depending on a single model uh, the given data set is divided into multiple number of uh, i can say that uh, the sub data sets in this case you can notice here d1 d2 and so on and each of this particular data set will be given to different classifiers here like c1 c2 and so on so what this particular classifiers will do is uh, they will do uh, the classification on this particular data set and the results will be combined with the help of something called as ensemble learning technique so with the help of this particular thing what we can do is uh, we will be able to handle the class imbalance there were n number of uh, ensemble learning techniques are there like bagging boosting stacking and so on i have already discussed all these particular concepts link for those videos is given in the description below in this video i have discussed what is balanced data set what is imbalanced data set and how can we handle imbalanced data set with the different techniques over here i hope the concept is clear if you like the video do like and share with your friends press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching